I'd now like to welcome to the stage the leader of USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Service, Chief Matt Lohr. Since taking the NRCS helm, Chief Lohr has proven himself to be a close friend of the nation's soil and water conservation districts, attending and taking selfies with a good many of the state association meetings and region meetings. As a producer himself with his wife and six children in Virginia, Matt embodies conservation in everything he does, from the practices he uses on his fields to his more than 30 years of dedicated professional service. On a personal note, I had the opportunity to meet Matt in 1991 when we both wore the blue corduroy FFA jacket and had questionable hairstyles. It was the 90s after all. Our families have remained uh, in, in good contact throughout the years with both Matt and my husband trading roles uh, as groomsmen in each other's weddings. Uh, it's been an amazing opportunity to see my personal friend uh, become the leader of one of our family of conservation's strongest allies. It is my distinct honor to introduce you to your NRCS chief and my good friend, Matt Lohr. Well, good morning, NA City. Kim, thank you so much. I'm getting a little teary-eyed up here. That was so sweet. So thank you. It's always nice to have an introduction from a personal friend, and we go back many, many years. In fact, I had some pictures I found in my scrapbook of that hair Kim talked about, and she decided not to put it up on stage this morning. But well, good morning. What a pleasure it is to be here with you to share. And Kim, a big shout out to you and your entire leadership team for, for leading this convention and, and more importantly, leading this association through the past year. Let's give them a great big hand. They've done a fantastic job. Thank you so much. Well, it was exactly one year ago as a new chief, I had a chance to stand on stage at my first NACD convention and introduce myself to you for the first time and be able to share a little bit about my background and the vision and the passion that I have for conservation. And in that time since last year in Texas, it's been quite an amazing journey of traveling this countryside and being able to visit with so many folks and so many states that are here represented today. I want to thank you so much for the hospitality everywhere I've gone, uh, being able to embrace me into your families, into your state associations, and making me feel a part of the team. It's truly been a tremendous opportunity to see you as our number one partner as we work to serve our farmers and ranchers and private forest owners. So thank you so much for that role that you've played, and it's exciting for me to have a chance to come back one year later and share a little bit more about the vision of where I see NRCS going and more importantly the vision that I see us going together in conservation. It's exciting. There's a lot of a lot of exciting things going on and it actually reminds me of a time when I was about four years old. Now when I was four I was pretty mischievous. I spent a lot of time at my grandparents house and I remember very vividly always looking for trouble to get into. And One afternoon I'm running through the house when all of a sudden y'all it hit me. Mother Nature started calling my name and I had to go to the bathroom. I mean just something fierce. Now when you're four and you're away from home, this could be a little bit of a traumatic experience. So I did what every four-year-old would do. I went running through the house screaming, Grandma, Grandma, I got to pee real bad, I got to pee real bad. Now my grandma was a wonderful, graceful lady. She sat me down and she said, Matt, I tell you what, let's play a little game. From now on, whenever you have to go to the bathroom really bad, instead of screaming through the house, I got to pee real bad, why don't you say, I have to whisper? It can be our little secret code word. <laughs> now to a four-year-old, that was the coolest thing that I'd ever heard in my entire life. So I said, you got it. I ran to the bathroom and I whispered. And later on that day, I whispered again. That night, I whispered again. I'd never had more fun whispering in my entire life. Now, another thing that always happened when I spent time at my grandparents' house was at night, I would always sleep in the same bed with my grandfather, just the two of us. And sure enough, later that night, about two in the morning, it hit me again. I sat straight up in bed. I had to go so bad. And I started getting nervous and shaking. But then I remember the encouraging words of my, mo of my grandmother earlier that day. And I saw my granddaddy laying beside of me. Now, he didn't know about our little secret game, so I started shaking him, and I said, Grandpa, Grandpa, I got to whisper, I got to whisper. <laughs> and he rubbing his eyes, and he said, all right, Matt, just come here and whisper in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are not going to whisper today. We have so much exciting things to talk about of where we're going together in 2020. So we don't want to whisper. We don't want to be quiet. We want to be bold and loud and proud as we begin to look forward. Now, I said it's been a busy year. Last year in 2019, I got on an airplane 144 times across 40 states, and these travels have enriched my opportunity to lead so much. Being able to see the diversity 
of agriculture all across this country, the types of farmers that, and ranchers that we have, the conservation needs that we have, and how the programs that we operate together and the technical assistance we provide together is able to make such an incredible difference in the lives of our customers all over the country. These stories, and you see with all of the states here, have really shaped the vision that I have and have helped me and our leadership team be able to really think about where we want to go moving forward. And I know we've got a lot of our NRCS leaders in the room today. Our state conservationists are here, a lot of our senior leaders from Washington. Would you stand for me? If you work for NRCS, very quickly, stand up for me. Please join me in thanking them so much for what they do. Absolutely. There is nothing better than going into a community and having farmers and partners come up to me and say, because of your staff, we have been able to do so many great things. So thank you so much to all of you. We have put together some priorities for this year based upon the things that I've seen in my travels. And I wanna share a couple of these with you today and dig into some new exciting initiatives and priorities that I'm excited to roll out for you. So first of all, mentoring and training for our staff is so very important. Making sure we've got the right people hired giving them the opportunities to feel comfortable and confident and skilled to do the work that needs to be done. Expanding our outreach efforts from those young, beginning, small, veteran, underserved producers, we have a great story to tell. Agriculture is so diverse. There's so many folks that we wanna be able to reach out to and help them understand the benefits of conservation and certainly that'll be a big part of what we do this year. And finally, elevating the importance of soil health. Former Chief Weller talked about soil health and the vision. Our agency has been involved in promoting soil health from the very beginning, back to the 1930s with our founder, Hugh Hammond Bennett. But one of my priorities this year is how can we continue that outreach to make sure that all of our employees are thinking soil health top of mind before every decision they make when every producer comes in the door. Now, given those priorities as we go forward, I wanted to stop for a second and say, do we have a mission and a vision at NRCS that is prepared to lead us into the year 2020. The last time we updated our mission and vision was 14 years ago, and it certainly has served us well, but about a year and a half ago, we had a team of leaders gathered in Norman, Oklahoma, and through that was part of a vision called NRCS of the Future. Are we guiding this agency to lead us for the next 80 years? And through that meeting, there were several major initiatives that came out of it. We've got work teams that have been working since that time, and one of those priority issues was addressing our mission and vision. Does it truly fit this agency and where we're going? Um, Travis Thomason, who leads our team in, in Hawaii and the Pacific Islands, was the leader of this project. There were a lot of folks from around the country that led in through surveys and work groups, a year and a half process. We even hired a consultant and brought expert teams to DC for an entire day to tweak it. You would never imagine how much time can be spent over one word when you're trying to create a mission and vision statement. Very excited, so the goal is we wanna empower our employees, especially these new employees coming on, to motivate them of what we do. And we wanna communicate to our producers and our partners exactly what we do in conservation. So yesterday afternoon with our leaders of NRCS, we unveiled it for the very first time. We had a video that went out last evening to all of our 9,000 employees. But this morning, I wanna debut this with you for our partners for the very first time. Are you ready? All right, our new mission, we deliver conservation solutions so agricultural producers can protect natural resources and feed a growing world. This is who we are. This is what we do as an agency. We deliver solutions so that our farmers and ranchers and forest owners can, we can protect what the good Lord's given us and feed a growing world that's gonna continue every single day. This, my friends, is the new mission of NRCS and we're excited to partner with you together collectively as we continue to work in this next generation. Our new vision, this is the goal. So if we can do our mission well, this is the end result. This is what we hope to achieve. This is like utopia, a world of clean and abundant water, healthy soils, resilient landscapes, and thriving agricultural communities through voluntary conservation. This is what we strive for. But you know, to me at the very end, the two most important words is that everything we do is still voluntary, but it's all about our conservation efforts. This is the new vision that we will roll out and continue uh, leading in that next generation. So it's an honor for me to be able to share that with you this morning and collectively and collaboratively going forward, we're gonna to continue to advance that and continue serving. The second priority of mine 
that's so important is, is mentoring this next generation. As someone myself who's been very involved in having mentors through my FFA program, uh, as an ag teacher that invested in me through working as an ag commissioner in Virginia, uh, working for Farm Credit, so many opportunities throughout my lifetime, I've had mentors that believed in me and invested in me and built that relationship. And in my travels, I've seen we're, we're obviously hiring a lot of great new employees, but they don't all come from farming backgrounds anymore like they did 30 and 40 years ago. It's important throughout our communities all across the country that these new employees that we're bringing in can kind of understand what it's like to walk in the shoes of our farmers and ranchers, to be able to help them understand what agriculture is like, what are the resource concerns, how can we all work together to address those concerns. So this mentoring program, again, we're, we're announcing at this conference, I'm so excited, it's gonna take our beginning new NRCS employees and partner them with farmers and ranchers and communities all across the country to be able to help build that relationship and it's going to start with working with our local conservation districts now it wouldn't be nrcs if we didn't have an acronym for it so we've named it camp conservation agricultural mentoring program and this has been in the works for about a year but i had a, a team of, of folks that came from around the country i see gary lee down here um, javier montoya from North new mexico these two state leaders came we had several of our uh, district conservationists and soil conservationists from around the country came in. We spent an entire week working in headquarters to flesh out exactly how it's gonna work. This is not a training program, but it's a relationship building mentoring program. As our new employees come on board, partner them up, give them an opportunity to go out to their farms and ranches, ask those questions, ride around in the combine, be in a safe environment, understand what agriculture is like in that, in that community but it's about investing in someone and feeling safe. And I know from the mentors that I've had, when I had someone that truly believed in me, I wanted to work harder to, to prove to them that, that I was worth investing in. And over time, as they develop that confidence, they'll be in a much better place to continue serving the other farmers that come in the door. So it's about being flexible, it's about building relationships, and it's really a true partnership that'll be between us and you as our conservation districts. So we're looking for experienced producers who care, they're willing to invest, they're willing to, to support and encourage. And again, we wanna increase our new employees' ability to understand agriculture, what it's like in that community, understanding the resource concerns and understanding how we can all work together. It'll be about an 18 month program hoping to get the two together about every other month or so. Uh, there's gonna be more details coming. In fact, at our NRCS booth right outside, we have a, a one pager if you're interested in learning more. We're gonna roll this out in a couple months in 17 states and then have it all across the country by the end of the summer. So just wanted to say thank you for the interest that you've expressed in my travels. When I talk about this with our districts, there's been a lot of interest and I'm sure we've got a lot of potential mentors here in the room today. So thank you for being willing to invest in helping our new employees be the best that they can be. Soil health, again, soil health is so very important. And the goal for me as chief is that whenever a farmer, a rancher, someone within the community, someone that's involved in agriculture from the private sector, when they say, I need some information, I have questions about a particular soil health issue that they will think in RCS. They will think of our agency as the go-to resource for being able to help answer their questions and address their concerns. And it's not just our division of soil health and it's not just our, our planners, it's all of our employees. It's being able to make sure that every one of us and our district employees as well, that they understand the importance of soil health, the foundation, and we're not just talking about it in headquarters in Washington, we're empowering our states and holding them accountable to make sure that they're creating plans and strategies that can best fit their individual state resources and their needs. Letting them create a soil health strategy, and again, working with our division of soil health team to help put a strategy together that's gonna to work for that individual team lots of training opportunities that we have, being able to take an assessment of our staff and where they are now and what gaps do they have in their knowledge and how we can adapt those needs towards specific training activities to help make them be the best that they can be. And finally, working with our soil health management systems, uh, putting a goal to increase the soil health management systems as a part of the overall planning, but more importantly, being able to track those outcomes. We don't have a lot of time to go into detail this morning, but just know as our agency, we are committed to continuing the great work of Hugh Hammond Bennett to make soil health a top priority as we address conservation needs 
all across the country. Another really cool and exciting thing that came out of our NRCS of the future is we have to do a better job telling the story. We hear it all of the time that we in conservation have got to communicate that farmers listen to farmers, right? We've got to let others know the importance and the benefits of what we do. And as the previous speaker up here said, that one day that when we think about climate change, that farmers are the go-to champion for being able to address a lot of these issues and resources that we have out there. We know that people like video, so part of the NRCS of the Future team, they came together to put a series called Conservation at Work, a series of 90-second videos that people can watch that kind of tell a story to spotlight our farmers and ranchers and those that are excelling in conservation. And so we really encourage you as our district partners to, to partner with us to use these wherever you can to help educate, to help showcase the work that we're doing. And we're fortunate um, they're going to queue up one. We've got one that we want to share with you right now. It's about 90 seconds long. Across the country, farmers, ranchers, and forest managers are working with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service to put conservation practices on their working lands. These practices help them protect and improve the natural resources on their operations. The Conservation at Work video series introduces dozens of popular conservation practices from the farmers and landowners themselves about how these practices have helped their farms. If you've ever wanted to know more about practices like high tunnels, no-till, or waste storage, these short videos are a great place to start. If you'd like to learn more, please visit farmers.gov. Let's give our folks a big hand for putting that together. There's a whole series of those out there that are available, so I hope that you'll take the time to watch them and more importantly, use them to help us communicate and tell that story. The last thing I wanna wrap up with you here today is really what I've learned as chief and as I've engaged with our employees and I've engaged with, with our partners and our producers that they've always, they've always heard me talk about providing customer service. It was certainly one of my top priorities last year and will continue this year, but it's about being able to provide the best service to all of us, the ability to provide service. Some of you may know a little bit about my personal background, but in 2011, my wife at the time, Andrea, passed away from a five-year battle of breast cancer. And so, very, very difficult time, but when we walk through a five-year journey of dealing with cancer, and I know there's probably many of you in this room today that have either experienced that or walked that journey with a loved one. You don't go through a five-year experience like that without meeting some incredible people that truly change your life. Experiences that, that I learned through that five-year period have really shaped my vision for how we communicate, how we lead, and more importantly, how we serve. And so when I talk about serving people, like at the core of what we do, one of those people that I've met in my lifetime is a gentleman on the screen named Raymond Ming. And Raymond is a doorman from a hotel in Bermuda. Now, about a year before my wife passed away, we were in the doctor's office and we got a really bad report. And we knew that we were about to engage in really aggressive chemotherapy and more surgeries. And the doctor said that this next year is gonna be extremely, extremely difficult. And it proved to be the last year that she was with us. But as we sat there in the doctor's office that day, our doctor, Dr. Gore, she became a, a close family friend throughout this entire journey. He said, you know what I would do, guys? He said, this treatment can wait a couple of days. He said, why don't you go home, look at a map, and why don't you pick some place to go, just the two of you, get away for a week somewhere, just forget about cancer, have a great time, enjoy one another, and then come back in a week a little bit more charged, and then we'll start this process then. So we're driving home and I look over and I say, so what do you think? And she said, well, I've always wanted to go to Bermuda. And I said, well, Bermuda it is. Now, I've been accused in my lifetime as a fifth generation farmer of being a little thrifty, um, a little bit cheap sometimes. But this was one time in my life that I, you know, I said, you know what, I don't care what it costs, we're gonna do this. So we booked first class tickets to Bermuda, stayed at one of the nicest resorts. And as we walked through the door on that first day, the gentleman on the screen, Raymond, was the first one to greet us. He was our doorman and he had a booming, booming Bermudian voice and just he had his hat on and the knee socks that came up and it's like welcome to Bermuda and it was one of those connections in life where you meet someone and you you know instantly this is going to be a friend for life so after welcoming us and taking our stuff to the room we stood there chatting for probably a half an hour and it was like I really like this guy 
And so over the course of the week that we were there, every day before we would leave, we would stop and have our morning ritual, talk with Raymond and have coffee. He actually came and joined us for dinner one night. And we loved hearing about his experiences and his time and uh, recommendations of where to go. And we'd be like, well, where do you want to go? Well, I don't know. Let's go talk to Raymond. He was like, he was part of our vacation. And so we had a great trip and we never brought up cancer one time with Raymond while we were there. It was truly a time just to forget about all of that because we knew it would, it would be coming soon enough. And on the last morning we were there, I went down early to check out, and I just thanked Raymond. I told him a little bit about what we were going through, and I thanked him for just being an integral part of our, our time away. And so later Andrea came down, and we hugged and exchanged business cards and pictures, and we got on a plane and headed back home. The next day we came in that afternoon, and on our porch was a big box, like three feet long. And Andrea starts opening the box and she starts to see that it's flowers. And at first she got all giggly and like mad. You, you, you shouldn't have, you know. And I'm like, <laughs> and then, then she sees how expensive they are. And she's like, I know you didn't, you didn't spend money on these. These were the biggest, nicest flowers I've ever seen in my life. About three feet long. They were huge. And we opened up the card. And this is exactly what it said. On your darkest days, know that someone in Bermuda is praying for you. Love, Raymond. Our doorman sent us the nicest flowers I've ever seen in my entire life. So we caught him, had a great conversation with him, and thanked him. And wouldn't you know, for the next 12 months that Andrea was with us, about once a month, we would get a phone call, usually on a Sunday afternoon from Raymond, just checking in, see how things were going, give us an update on how nice the weather was in Bermuda, and just really just kind of catching up because he truly became part of our family. And I can tell you that one of the most difficult phone calls that I ever had to make was after Andrea passed away and I called Raymond and let him know the news and the first thing he said is can you send me the details because I want to make sure that I could come and be there for the service this is our doorman y'all came to Virginia for a funeral and you know when I think back about that relationship and the experiences that we had with Raymond I learned so much in my heart about what it means to give and to serve Raymond had the best attitude of everyone I'd ever met. You know, I think we all agree that there's days that we have that just stink. I mean, there's opportunities that we have to be upset and mad and depressed. But Raymond was so clear about all of us are going to have things that happen to us that aren't fair. It's just life, but your attitude can get you through anything. When we think about serving others, it's not just enough to do the job. It's how can you go above and beyond. Always please more, give more higher expectations always go above and beyond to meet those needs and demands you know raymond talked a lot about the worth and value that we have you see what most people don't know is raymond was a multi-millionaire he was a successful ceo of a corporation retired early had all the money in the world but he had a passion for serving so he goes to work at a local resort opening up doors for people letting them know what restaurants to eat at and he said, you cannot imagine the number of times people would come in and they would look at me as the doorman and they would just look down their nose and scoff and make rude comments because I'm just a doorman. But he said, you know, all of us in life have value and worth if we can look through whatever outside perception we see. And you know, as we all are in the service business, right? We're serving folks every day in conservation. Every person has worth regardless of their title or their position. And the last thing, you know, in the end, it's all about relationships that we create. And I think this is what was one of the driving forces behind this mentoring program is because relationships matter. We're in the conservation business. Yeah, we, we help address those resource concerns, but at the end of the day, we're, we're helping people. And the number of times that I've sat around the table in a farmer or a rancher's home, and I've seen tears in their eyes explaining how much the relationship has meant between their local district conservationists or the local Soil and Water Conservation District employee. It matters. Relationships in the end are what matter most. So a couple years ago, I come home, go through my mail, and there's a, a travel magazine in the mail with a little post-it inside. I flip it open to page 14, and I found this picture of Raymond. You see, a couple years ago, Raymond was selected as Bermuda's Doorman of the Year. How cool is that? So. It's kind of neat to see we don't do service to be recognized, but if we, if we serve others well, it's kind of neat how life works, that people will recognize us and will notice that. And uh, really cool to see my good friend Raymond highlighted as Bermuda's Doorman of the Year who continues to serve and make a difference every day. 
thank you for the opportunity for not only me, but for NRCS to be a partner. We have an amazing opportunity every day to work with our customers and producers, to, to be a leader, to address the, the challenges that are out there to improve the industry of agriculture. It's an honor for me as chief to be able to be the leader of this agency that gets to work with all of you to make sure that we can work collaboratively to take conservation into the next generation. Thank you for the chance to be here and thanks so much for all that you do. Appreciate it, thank you. I think at this time, Tim Palmer's gonna come up and help us present an Earth Team Award. I better start off with a drink. It's been a long night since last night, and I don't know if I need to drink uh, something with a little higher spirits to save my sultry voice. But uh, anyway, um, again, thank you, Matt. And it is now a pleasure to uh, present the 2019 NACD NRCS Earth Team Award with you. Since 1985, Earth Team volunteers have worked side by side to deliver conservation practices on private lands. The NACD NRCS Earth Team Award serves to recognize those who volunteer their time, their resources, and energy to protect and improve the quality of our nation's natural resources. This year, the award goes to the Virginia Dare Soil and Water Conservation District in Chesapeake, Virginia. Chief, will you tell us a little more about uh, uh, our award winner? Absolutely. So, Tim, I'm a little biased because you did mention they're from the great Commonwealth of Virginia. But I'm super excited to be able to recognize my, my friends from back uh, in the Chesapeake, Virginia Beach area. Uh, they have worked tirelessly to implement ag cost share programs and provide technical assistance to farmers and ranchers. Some people may not think of Virginia Beach as an agricultural area, but that Chesapeake, Virginia Beach area has some of the, the finest agricultural production anywhere in the Commonwealth. The team has worked hard to deliver agricultural and educational resources to the community. They provide scholarships to local youth and even host uh, several farm day programs. So uh, at this time, uh, Kendall Tyree is the executive director of the Virginia Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts, a longtime friend of mine. So Kendall, do you wanna come on up and accept this award? Let's give uh, Virginia Day a great big round of applause. Congratulations, Kendall. Good job. Can we get a picture of you? Okay. Actually, hold on a second. Let me, why don't you get in the middle? There we go. Let you hold that. There we go. There we go. That's much better, much better. 